In downtown Rock Hill, the firm of Williams and Fudge is based in an interesting structure. The building might look new, but it's far from being young. I think there's beauty in any old thing, that, that uh, any old building, and I think this is a great opportunity, and I do think it's an inspiration anytime that you see something being revitalized. This was an old cotton mill and was abandoned until a group of partners decided to restore it. There's a tremendous amount of um, community value that you get out of bringing a building like this that's over 100 years old that was one of the mainstays of this, this community's history uh, back into the mainstream. At first, there was little desire to renovate the old mill. In 2005, we were contacted about the city about possibly moving our business downtown, just increase employees and numbers downtown. We turned them down. That changed pretty quickly, however. In 2006, early, uh, they approached me again, and because we had seen what Duke University was doing at the old Lucky Strike uh, American Tobacco Company warehouses in Durham, North Carolina, we fell in love with history and how we could make the building different. The city of Rock Hill wanted to start improving what it would call the textile corridor. At the same time, Williams and Fudge was running out of room for its student loan collections business. It was really the, the interest of the city to revitalize the textile corridor and our need for additional space, which is a perfect marriage. I think it benefited the community of Rock Hill and it gave us a, a expansion opportunity of our company. Taking on the task of bringing an abandoned building back to life is not for everyone. There's a real appreciation for history. Um, and you have to be passionate about that. This is not every developer's dream. The abandoned mill might have been even more of a challenge than other targets for adaptive reuse. Very difficult to even imagine that it could be a usable facility again. When you walk through the building, it was literally pitch dark. Um, water had gotten into the building so that there was um, a significant amount of mold. Um, it wasn't a very pleasant environment. The exterior of the building was overgrown with weeds, um, and you know it just looked like a, a, what it was—a huge abandoned building um, with no hope. I've always been a risk taker, and most of my friends, when they heard we were remodeling in it, thought that uh, I had gone crazy for sure this time. One thing that helped is that one of the partners, Brian Barwick, had experience rejuvenating old structures. We've learned that, you know. Things that to the untrained eye look just absolutely uh, unsalvageable in many time, many cases all. Another factor was that the partners say they could see beyond what was in front of them to what it could become. You have to have a vision of what it's going to be like. If you just see it the way it is in the current condition, you're not going to appreciate it. But we just saw a tremendous amount of potential uh, for this building and, you know, and create a new life for this building. Another bit of incentive was knowing how much the mill had once meant to the town. After we walked the building and understood it, particularly after we understood the history, that, you know, whatever the effort needed to be to save it, that's, that's what we would do to restore it and renovate it. Appearances aside, the cotton mill did possess some positive features. The architects and engineers assured us that 130-year-old beams were very firm and very much in place. The structural features of the building were unique. I mean, the, the, the heart pine floors, the enormous wood-hewn columns, the masonry brick, um, the windows. There was a financial incentive to resurrecting the mill and doing it the right way. It was on the National Registry of Historic Places. We were excited that it already had that because we, we utilized federal tax credits to help us renovate it. While the tax credits were beneficial, the National Registry designation did put some limits on what could be done at the site. You couldn't come in and replace these floors. You couldn't replace the wood columns with, say, steel columns. You couldn't come in and, and tear the roof off and redo the decking with something other than wood plank decking. This place filled its original role for nearly a century, but after that, its usefulness was in question. It operated in a textile mill from 1881, May 1881, till somewhere in 1967. Then after that time, it was a warehouse until 2000, then it set empty for about five years. The history, though, remains alive as the partners made sure to pay tribute to the past with numerous artifacts. We wanted to honor people who built this community, and the people that are over 60, 70 years old remember this as being a male community, so we need to honor the people who brought us to where we are today. There are many scenarios under which this building would have been a casualty of progress. It's so much easier to tear these buildings down and build a new structure 
I imagine the structure would have been torn down by now because it had a lot of major uh, flaws and, and the roof leaking everything. The city had done a good job of trying to keep it up, but uh, it was deteriorating real fast, and we caught it just in time to keep it. It was caught in time, and now the structure is something which the partners and the people of this community look at with pride. We love it, we enjoy it, we have a lot of people want to come by and see it. Uh, we've had people apply here because they love the building and what we've done to you know, help support downtown Rock Hill. The project has earned several state and national awards for adaptive reuse, and it stands as an inspiration to others who might not be content to let history fade away.